Hi Leo! Welcome to your October 2019 Twin Flames Tarot Spread reading. <laughs> um, this is a special reading that I had done for many of the other signs. I actually did it for a two-month period and it was intended for September and October but there were a couple signs and you were one of them that I didn't get to during that time frame and I want to you know close out this series with uh, you and Aquarius your opposite sign so in in some of the readings most of the readings I was reading um, a little explanation of the idea of twin flames and then I stopped doing it I think I'm going to just briefly um, mention it again this is all coming from a website called emeraldlotusdivination.com and I got the twin flame reading uh, a spread as well as this information and uh, they did get it from another site themselves the um, some of these uh, explanations of what a twin flame is so um, this one is from soulevolution.org and they say twin flames are the other half of our soul we each have only one twin and generally after being split the two went their separate ways incarnating over and over to gather human experience before coming back together ideally this happens when both in both of their last lifetimes on the planet so they can ascend together so you probably haven't had many li lifetimes with your twin each twin is a complete soul not half a soul. It is their task to become more whole, uh, balancing their female and male sides, and ideally becoming enlightened before reuniting with their twin. This reunion of, is of two complete and whole beings. All other relationships through which our lives could be said to be practiced could be said to be practiced for the twin, the ultimate relationship. And um, the other thing, this is from a, it's called Alpha Imaging, or whatever that is, um, a quote that they have on this site. When they go, when twin flames do incarnate together, the coming together is often chaotic and stressful physically, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually. Their relationship is very intense. The romantic loving version we all think of is really for twin souls which I don't know if that's the same as soulmates or what. Twin flames come together as two mirrors of each other. They're there to reflect back to each um, other the truth of themselves. What is reflected is not only the beauty of themselves but also their imperfections, attachments, and emotional baggage. So for what that's worth, it's not very appealing to me but you know for some people they feel very strongly about the idea of twin uh, flames. So I wanted to experiment with this type of reading and um, it's a very particular pattern here so I will explain to you Leo after I have laid out all the cards you know what is what and any card that does not appear in frame I will still be holding up so no worries Okay. Alrighty then. The card to express you and your twin flames energy, the Eight of Cups, leaving what no longer serves you. Um, in terms of how that um, expresses the energy of this connection, it can be different things. It can be that each of you encourages the other not to um, stay in any place that is stagnant and take a chance and um, be willing to, how would I put it, um, have that sense 
of freedom that you know valuing freedom you're a fire sign leo so you naturally are like this and striving for something more something more meaningful in life something less mundane um, that can certainly be what's happening but even as a theme in your relationship that could be like the leaving part because i had read to you um, if I could find it, they said when twin flames do incarnate together, the coming together is often chaotic and stressful. Um, there was something, I thought I saw something in here that talked about them, you know, having, I don't see it now. Well, one thing it says, usually, I didn't read this part, but it says, usually when one flame incarnates, the other is out of form, preferring to energetically support the incarnating twin. Um, and I read somewhere else that there can be separations. So with the Eight of Cups, it's this idea of, you know, even when you are apart, you can still be connected. I mean, that could uh, definitely be what's at play as well. And the second card is to indicate, and this is number two, I guess, because it's the way that I laid out these cards. It's not going to be, you know, just what you would think. They're kind of all over the place you now, which is good because, you know, then you don't have the typical pattern. You know, there's kind of like that... Uh, unpredictability but anyway the number two position is what our purpose is together in this lifetime we have the page of pentacles this is a card of communication but on the practical level it's funny I was just reading today something about um, the nine dimensions of consciousness and they were talking about how the higher dimensions are not superior to the lower dimensions it's not about that that this earth plane is, you know, ex you know, very valuable for what we need to do. Uh, with pentacles, we're talking about practical uh, things, things that are tangible. It could be money, it could be the body, you know, it could be anything like that. And page is communication. Um, but page can also be things that um like if you if you and another person are kind of like i was going to say like business partners which is kind of weird because that really sounds mundane in a sense it doesn't sound very mystical but st the page can be like beginnings like uh, starting things together projects that are of a practical nature it's also can be that you communicate on a very in a in a very grounded way and spreading messages that are very practical perhaps as a team for others now i can't give you an example of what this would be but if this makes sense to some of you that is the important thing so even like teaching um skills to others that have um you know very obvious concrete purposes maybe it is practical knowledge uh, teaching people practical things so that they can function in life in this connected to this earth perhaps it can even be with spreading messages of um, you know taking care of plants and taking care of um, other things connected to the earth or to the monetary system anything like that being on the internet that's a form of communication especially nowadays but things of a practical nature and this person could be your partner in this sense number three an important lesson we must learn in this lifetime 
It almost makes me wonder if your partner is an earth sign like Virgo, Leo, because um, I'm getting, I did get um, another pentacles on top there. So we'll see. An important lesson you must learn in this lifetime. Three of cups. Three is a crowd. <laughs> Um, this can be sometimes the card of womanizing and things like that. So I would say in general, the purpose of fidelity, of being, um, you know, monogamous, in being able to really give your attention to one person, the Three of Cups can be about partying you know, doing a lot of socializing and perhaps one or both of you need to curtail that and that's something that, it, well, it, it sounds like we must learn. So both of you may meet, you know, in that kind of um, environment like a bar or something where you're just kind of tying one on and you both realize that you have to take care of yourselves and you can't live like this, um, that you're living on the surface of life. The Three of Cups is important. That's one thing I want to make clear is that none of these cards are bad cards. Even the Devil card can have a constructive purpose. But with the Three of Cups being a card of socializing, it's knowing when to say when. It's knowing when too much when it's too much, when there's self-indulgence, when a person is living outside of themselves. They're socializing all the time, but they're not really connecting with a person one-on-one. -on -one. The Three of Cups can be drinking too much, and, the, and maybe both of you have the, these, this tendency, and you help each other to learn how to um, live a life of sobriety but still have fun in life because this is a card of fun and socializing but sometimes people you know start to drink too much and you can you know substitute it for their other intoxicant of choice because they are shy although Leo that's usually not a problem for you and they want to just feel like they belong like they can you know mingle and things like that and so you may have to learn how to do these things without having a crutch uh, but like I said this can involve you know bringing in another party or being unfaithful you know how does this hurt the relationship perhaps you know in some cases there's even an open relationship and the two parties are experimenting with not being monogamous and finding out how that feels and why if it doesn't work why it didn't work four how we can grow from this lesson T two of wands choosing t to me this is about choosing your passion or if this is about relationships you know honoring relationships that our that <laughs> our that are um, really inspiring to you and stimulating, rather than being the kind of person who has a tendency to get involved with relationships where um, either you're looking at it from the practical standpoint or. Um, maybe they're frivolous relationships or sexual relationships primarily. The two of wands is, can just simply be about choosing, but there's an expansive quality with fire. So basically what I would say to the sign of Leo is that somebody who challenges you is really the best person for you. Leo is a very strong personality and you sometimes have a tendency to overpower your partner, especially if your partner is an earth sign or a water sign. You can overpower them with your 
um, very extroverted personality. And feminine signs like earth and water signs can be very passive um, to the Leo. And this may appeal to you on some level, but it may not be good for you and your growth. And so choosing a partner, and with the two, there's the element of choice here. Choosing a partner who challenges you, who, you know, stretches you, makes you grow, is really the best way um, to show your maturity and your willingness to use relationship as a spiritual tool. And also the, the ability to see how, um, it, how important it is to choose a partner who you really vibe with. You know, fire is passionate energy. Um, sometimes, you know, depending, you may have inner planets are on Earth or something like that. And you may have a ten like like Virgo, for instance, and you may have a tendency... Um, or even like a water sign like Cancer, if you have like Venus and Cancer, Venus and Virgo or something like that, you may have that desire to be with somebody who is very organized and serious and as, you know, beneficial as that person can be to your life. There may not be that emotional connection and you may feel like they're enhancing your life in a practical way, but you're, but they're not really stretching you. They're not really um, inspiring you emotionally. They're, they're just kind of like, they're a great, like, it's almost like being a great business partner in a lot of ways and you need more than that. So the fifth position is what our lives look like after completing this lesson. <laughs> well, marriage. The Hierophant is about this traditional institution we call marriage. It's about conforming to tradition. And um, certainly for some Leo people, I think that Leo people in general favor marriage versus living with somebody because you like guarantees since you're a fixed sign and you think that you can make something ironclad by having it be a contract. I could see that kind of, I could see the wheels turning in the typical Leo person's head. But this is also about the spiritual. That's what the Hierophant represents as well. And by the way, I have made the case that the Hierophant should be the um, should actually be Sagittarius instead of Taurus, which is supposed to be. And inter you know um, interestingly, I hope I didn't say that twice. Um, I was able to find one so-called expert in tarot who connects it to Sagittarius because it's the also the you know it's a God connection, which is not you know Taurus is not traditionally uh, connected to God. That, that's Sagittarius's domain. And, um, and also, you know, just the religious tradition and higher learning. But, um, so, so the thing is, is like, you know, if you're choosing a partner, that kind of fire energy would be much more appropriate. But here I, I've also had um, Earth show up like page of pentacles and six of pentacles so it's kind of funny and and the empress can also be taurus so um who knows maybe that's a, a little side note to some of you but it's in terms of the spiritual i think too that you begin to see that relationships are not just uh for convenience sake for these other reasons but also for two beings to come together and share their spiritual journey together and they can help each other. I mean, that's the, the best part about it. And, um, and I feel that way with my partner and I, that we have 
it's like a great support system for our spiritual paths. Um, because sometimes a lot of people don't get it, you know, the kind of things that you go through. And it's really nice to have that kind of person who has your back in that sense. And they really understand that you're going through a certain, um, you know, phase in your spiritual life. And they can, you know, especially if there's somebody who is well read with spiritual books, they can kind of give you in inspirational quotes and, and just insights that kind of flip the script for you. Even though I, I'm not a, um, a Sun in Leo, I'm a Sun in Sagittarius, I still think that um, this is so true for everybody um, in, in a sense, that, that uh, having that spiritual connection with another person takes a relationship to the next level and um, the sixth card is kind of like an instructional card. What you can do to strengthen your bond. This is the Empress. Now, if I'm not mistaken, this is considered the Divine Feminine. But I, you know, somebody, if somebody might, uh, you know, correct me on that. But this card is the Earth Mother, and it's connected. I would say especially to Taurus, because it's. A card that is connected to Venus but it you know Libra is another sign that is connected to um, the Empress but this is supposed to be Earth Mother so I don't you know oh well I've had this debate before so um, the Empress card is connected to sensuality and I feel that Leo's tend to be quite sensual in their own right but with the Empress, um, if you are a female Leo, I would even go as far as saying that this card is about you toning it down. If you are with, if you are um, involved with a man, that you do not feel the need to assert yourself all the time. Uh, I'm not saying walk 10 paces behind the man, but Leo, uh, fire sign women, and I'm one of them as well, have a tendency to be very um, overbearing because we have that masculine tendency. And somebody might say, well, you know, how come a man can be like that and a woman can't? Well, I would say the same thing to a man to learn how to become less aggressive. But for a woman, that traditional role, and, and by the way, the, the uh, Hierophant is about tradition. So we're looking at it from the, that standpoint. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. We've gone so far the other direction where it's considered, um, a woman is considered a sellout if she's not in your face with a guy, her partner. Um, it doesn't mean that you are uh, in in any kind, any way, shape, or, or form allowing yourself to be um, inferior in the relationship. But simply noticing when you have a tendency to be um, aggressive and how you can you can embrace more of that divine femininity, um, which means that you understand that you can be passive. You don't always have to be um, assertive in a situation. This is something that all of us need to hear, not just women. But nowadays, women are you know, taking it to the extreme. We always seem to have imbalances. Either we have too much um, of the masculine dominating things, and now we have too much of the females dominating things and using the past to justify this domination, but it's still imbalanced. So it was so funny because I was thinking earlier, I don't know what I was, you know, going to be talking about, but I was 
mentioning, you know, what I call the Guy Ritchie syndrome. Um, you know, Madonna is a Leo and she had a husband who was a Virgo and who was called Mr. Madonna by the tabloids. And of course, you know, they're just trying to get a rise out of people like this. But he was, you know, a, um, and he probably still is, a filmmaker in his own right. So he wasn't just somebody without a profession. He had his own thing going on. And he felt overshadowed by that relationship. I don't know if that's why he left, but I think that was the reason given. And so under different circumstances, they might have actually made it. But because perhaps, not knowing, <laughs> Madonna refused to yield um, and she was just relentlessly wanting control of the relationship and things like that and being unwilling to yield, that's the other thing. That's what part of passivity is also that flexibility where you don't need to always have your own way. Uh, Leo is a fixed sign, so you tend to get very stubborn in your likes and dislikes and wanting things a certain way and not being willing to um, compromise. And that's always important in relationships. The next card is something we can do to heighten our vibration. So this is coming from a higher level. It's funny, though, because this also can sometimes be uh, sensuality. So, I mean, I guess it's possible that could be tantric yoga that the two people do. Now, if that's the case, that would be using sexual, uh, the sex act as a form of communion, if you will, a form of um, spiritual, a spiritual offering or something to that effect, um, rather than just a carnal act. So the point of tantric yoga, from what I can see, is that it's a way to take something that is a physical act and, and transform it into a spiritual practice. And so it takes this idea of pleasure, of, um, you know, the material, the body, and converts it to something higher where there's much more intention being put into it. And because um, it's, it's interesting, Leo rules the fifth house of recreational sex. And also it's the house of love and creativity, but that's one facet is sex, but as it pertains to kind of like pleasure, it's a house of pleasure, house of fun. So having sex for the sake of having sex and just fun, but not really putting intention into it. Scorpio, the eighth house is sex magic, spiritual sex. And so that's taking it more seriously. But this card also is about emotional intimacy. They're using the nudity to, you know, indicate uh, intimacy. But um, to me, it's more of a spiritual variety, not, you know, the physical type, the emotional, spiritual. And that's the way that you can heighten your vibration by sharing with your partner these things. Leo is a very proud sign. Leos might not want to share their vulnerabilities with a partner. They may feel, especially if they have the moon in Scorpio, they may have, feel like they want to appear invulnerable. Is that a good idea? I say no. I say that is something that can lead to um, not really being honest with the other party about who you truly are, but also in order to use this relationship to the highest level, there has to be that sense of being willing to share at the highest level. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, now, did I, it's funny, I hope I read this. Okay, let me just double check here. Okay, eight. Something that your twin is mirroring for you. And we have the moon card. Again, you know, piggybacking on the three of cups, addiction issues. Um, anytime that you tend to be um, somebody who is self-indulgent to, to an excessive degree. And that can feel unpleasant to look at because it may feel very uncomfortable, like um, you have no connection to this and it's all them and, and things like that. However, I do believe that, that the moon card um, can point out, you know, because the moon is an illuminating body. It is reflecting, getting its light that way, but it still has light um, regardless. And sometimes it can be difficult to admit when we have some of these similar traits. Now, they may be showing up in a different place for you. Maybe it's not drinking too much. Maybe it's a sexual addiction. Maybe it's a tendency to talk about yourself too much and to be, you know, rather self-centered. Um, and so the, your partner may be self-centered trying to satisfy an addiction and they tend to not seem to care about the people around them enough and yet you may have some of those similar traits and yet it's not in the same way that this person does so it's easier for you to like be in denial over it so that's kind of what I see also the moon card can indicate deception delusion and this can be lying to oneself so if you have a tendency to be in denial, uh, Leo, especially if you have the moon in a sign like Pisces, um, which interestingly enough, the moon card connects to Pisces in the Tarot. Unlike, you know, you think it would connect to, to Cancer since astrologically that's the ruler of, the moon is a ruler of Cancer, but no, it's um, Pisces. And so these tendencies that we have to delude ourselves and create a an alternative narrative to what is really going on in our lives, this person may mirror that. And then the last card is what I can do to help my twin reach their highest potential. Six of pentacles. In some cases, you may be the one who is funding them. And what I mean is, and you know, you see the, the scales, so this is supposed to be about balance, but it could be that um, your twin is somebody who is not as developed as you are in terms of financial freedom. They may be more, they may have a tendency to have problems or challenges handling material energy. They don't know how to handle money. They tend to waste it. They tend to be naive about it. And you can teach them how to manage the physical resources better. Um, you can also teach them how to be more generous. Perhaps it's you're the it's like one sided where you're giving to them, but they don't have a tendency and you can show them how they have to, you know, the scales show that. That, they, that even if you are the one who is um, the more financially solvent, and Leos tend to be very generous, and not surprisingly to me, they tend to attract money to them. I think people who are um, generous tend to attract money because it's good vibes, you know, as simple as that. And um, because of that, you may be the one who has more of the physical or financial resources, but you can show the other party how to give back so that there's 
an e there's a circuit that isn't being broken so that they learn how they can do it because sometimes people are more stingy because they've grown up with um you know a lack of resources and they feel like they are losing every time that they give and you can teach them about the law of attraction that it doesn't work that way I remember Deepak Chopra many years ago before the before the secret in the law of attraction became a household name he had this book called the seven I think it was called the seven spiritual laws of success I'm sure I have a copy somewhere and um, I remember one of those laws and I think it came out in the 90s if I'm not mistaken but I remember reading the 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 laws and one of them was about circulating money in other words that money that is stagnant um, and doesn't circulate it doesn't have you know the energy kind of um, is blocked because it's not it doesn't keep going now I you know back then I didn't have the same uh, you know understanding I probably was more cynical and like oh yeah I'm sure you would love for us to all circulate our money you know and buy all your products or something you know just joking around like that but I really see that to be the case when you give that you're keeping that flow going and it's not about giving to get but it's about giving to give back to life give back in thanks gratitude for what you feel blessed by and it's a, it's a beautiful thing and you you know sometimes we have to start very small because we just don't have that breadth of vision and that's okay so you can help your partner become more generous and more capable of handling material energy leo it's interesting that Leo's a fire sign because there's so many things to me that suggest somebody who is such who is a great uh, business person, a uh, hard worker, and a great leader. And all of these things are business attributes that I associate with Leo. Okay, that's what I have for you, Leo. I hope that you uh, resonated with this on some level. If you would like a private reading, um, please check me out. I'm at rainamoonastrology.com and the link is below. Take care. Bye.